name is Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie, and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute learned tip. However, today's video really isn't two minutes and it's not really about a tip. Today's video is really in response to a viewer question in response to our Art Speak series. Um, Art Speak series is a kind of like a satellite video series that we've done. Um, where I'm interviewing some of our own employee artists that work here at Cheap Joe's, such as Joe himself, uh, Amanda from our retail store, Allie from our retail store, um, and other folks, talking to them about their art, their process, the arc of the, um, their creativity and how they got to where they are, and then also about the, the products that they like to use the most. Well, interestingly, I was going through um, your YouTube comments and thank you all for your kind comments and um, questions and all the interaction. Um, but somebody asked, well, Julie, what about your work and what does it mean to you and what do you think about it and all this kind of stuff. So it's not that like my work has been completely absent from our video series. There's quite a few videos throughout um, the hundreds of videos we've done over the years that where I'm referencing my own work or showing my own work on camera. So, the, you know, some of this you guys may have already seen in some context here or there. So please forgive. Um, but I thought, you know, I'll try to answer the question in the best way that I can and talk to you a little bit about how I got here and what I like to do and what I used to do and all that kind of stuff. So. Let's start from the beginning. I started making art when I was very young. I remember being three, four years old and was, you know, very, very deliberately making, you know, art and doing that kind of stuff. I don't know where any of that is at this point. The first time I remember like trying to execute, um, you know, a realistic image of something. I, I think I was like nine years old and we had an antique pump organ that I tried to render, which is extremely difficult, like super ambitious, like, and you know, I was doing it from an angle. So there's lots of perspective involved. It's like, what? Um, but you know, that's kind of like me, you know, I would do something like that. And so, uh, you know, I look back on it now, it's not surprising at all. I was always doing art when I grew up. Um, there is some discussion about like what my art kind of meant to me through my teenage years and the first of our art and healing um, series. Uh, I'll refer back to that so you don't have to hear that whole story again. But our art, my art has played a big part in my life and who I am um, throughout the course of my life. Um, and it, it is waxed and waned in terms of its prominence in what I was doing. Um, and I think that's primarily because I came from a extremely practical background where like being a professional artist was almost like a silly thing to want to be. And so then I never let myself kind of aspire to anything like that. I never thought that that would be something that I would do. I always wanted to work in the art industry in some context. Maybe it's a gallery, maybe it's a museum, something like that. But being a fine artist who sells and stuff like that was never, that was never something that I thought I would ever want to do because I kind of, I mean, honestly was programmed to believe that I couldn't do that. However you feel about messaging and stuff like that, there are some things in your life where, you know, you get told something enough times you start to believe it. I would say that, you know, my art through art school was assignment driven. It didn't have a continuum that was my own. It didn't have a style. It didn't, it was kind of like whatever I needed to get the job done and, you know, get my grades and move along. And primarily my artwork at that point was not drawing and painting and stuff. My concentration was in alloys and metal smithing and stuff like that. Um, so it was jewelry centered. Um, so don't, I don't, you know, nothing really kind of fits into this context here at Cheap Joe's. So don't really have much to show you, uh, you know, about that. But I guess, you know, 
uh, you know, after I graduated, um, I was going into the commercial art field. Actually, it was um, working for a firm that um, did uh, commercial, like corporate art acquisition and stuff. You know, what a fabulous learning experience. <laughs> but it was also about learning what you don't want to do. Um, and I realized pretty quickly that was not what I wanted to do. Um, that there was a lot of disconnection from the art and the artists and not, you know, it really wasn't all that I, th I hoped it was going to be. So I was looking at my art and my role in it in a very different way. Um, came back to Boone from Florida because I realized I just wasn't going to be able to do that and be happy. Um, didn't know what I was going to do and ended up here at Cheap Joe's Art Stuff in 1996 and have been connected with um, this organization in some way, shape, or form ever since. My art has changed the most just because of my exposure to material here. Um, every little teeny phase um, has been because of the influence or introduction of some kind of material. And also, I guess this format has been pretty uh, important for me. Um, typically, I have always worked in a sort of kind of like realistic way. You know, I'm rendering subjects that are relatable and stuff like that. Granted, I'm not a landscape painter. And that's never floated my boat. That's not where I am. And I was like, but normally I'm talking about, I'm like relating to people. This relates back to a couple of videos I did a, a couple of years ago when a customer um, had a question about what inspires me. There are two videos that we did in that series. One was called uh, Love and one was called Beauty. And that's kind of been the continuum ever since. You can watch those videos if you like. Um, they're a longer explanation than this little thing. But those are two things that have always inspired me, like beautiful people, what does beauty mean? Why are people so connected to it? You know, all that kind of stuff. And also the love of the people who are in my life and the people that I care about or I feel like are important or even, even funny people. So those people, like my daughter, primarily has been a feature of my work for a very, very long time. Primarily, I've worked in a colored pencil for a long time. It's a comfortable zone for me. I find it pretty easy to, you know, say what I need to say with colored pencil. And so it's been an easy fallback. Um, however, I found like in my older age that I'm not really as interested in spending hours and hours and hours saying things about stuff. For instance, like one of the pieces that you, you know, see behind me or this piece is actually a multimedia collage piece. It is Crescent 300 and then a little bit of golden fluid acrylic to establish the base layers, then Faber-Castell watercolor pencil and colored pencil, black ink rice paper that's actually been hand manipulated to fold around the illustration board, and then jewelry sewn into the illustration board. This piece was kind of like the end of what I had to say about it. You know, like it really kind of marks the end of a, the primary portion of my colored pencil work. It was kind of like the culmination of like, okay, been there, done that. Um, granted, I love it. People respond to it. Um, you know, people are kind of drawn into that kind of visual connection with like looking at what looks like of somebody staring back at you. But then it kind of closed the book on that, you know, chapter for me. And I've kind of been hunting around at what to do. What is it I'm trying to say? In that kind of fog, you know, luckily I've had cheap Joes to keep me motivated and working because I think I probably would have let it lie um, more than it should have if I didn't have the job that I have. But Cheap Joe's has always been very generous with me to let me kind of, yeah, granted, they will give me a product and then they're, they're, they want me to demo it for you, whether it's in the catalog or, or this format or something like that. They, but they've always been really generous not to tell me what to do. Um, so it lets me kind of just decide how that thing manifests and what the subject matter is and stuff like that. But all of a sudden here, here lately, um, probably in the last year or so, and it probably started with a little teeny workshop that I took with our own Jess here in the call center about pouring. Uh, and I was learning about resin and fluid pouring and stuff like that. And granted, don't get me wrong, I do not think <laughs> 
<laughs> do I have an aficionado or an expert in this area at all? Because I don't. Um, but I do think it was an inter interesting exploration for me in that I gave myself permission to figure it out and like it didn't have to be anything it didn't have to look like anything it could just be pretty it could just have shiny colors and that could just be enough and so you know i've dabbled with a little bit of pouring in there you know in that time space um but it's kind of led me to where i am now and you'll see some some pieces <laughs> I've done more recently. This is where I'm dwelling at the moment, folks. It's interesting because I do have some little smatterings through the years of this kind of work kind of poking its head out in the past, but this is where it's at right now for me. It's largely abstract. These are largely color-based or visual rhythm, whether it's line work or repetition of shape and stuff like that, with these kind of amorphous color forms and stuff like that. I guess what it says to me, I guess with age, you get to a point where you care less and less what people think about things. It's at some point you have to decide it's about what you care about and what you think about things. And these are really more about me and what, how I feel. I find these very beautiful. I find them relaxing. I find them therapeutic. I feel a real sense of joy when I make these new works that I kind of didn't get in the same way with the other more realistic stuff. Yeah, it's satisfying when you can execute, blah, you know, and people go, oh, that's a flower, oh, that's a tree, and you're like, yes, it is. I don't really care. <laughs> if you know what it is. I, I just don't. And you know, and maybe that just comes with age and stuff like that. Um, uh, if it makes you smile, great. If it makes you feel good, great. If you think it looks pretty, that's nice. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, and that's kind of where <laughs> I'm at. Largely, I've been kind of obsessing over a lot of watercolor lately and delving into the behavioral qualities, the way they, they interact together, both opaque and transparent ones. Some of the ones that are made out of semi-precious stones, you know, just like all the different factors, the way that they do things together. Um, and that's kind of what I'm into right now. So. I don't know how much more I need to say about it. It's kind of sounds kind of rude and unapologetic and I don't mean it like that. Um, I just think it's kind of part of like letting yourself be. That's kind of where I be at this time. Uh, so um, I don't know if any of this is helpful or, you know, useful to you. I hope it is. Um, and, but we thank you for watching and appreciate your kind comments. And if you do have questions, please send them on. We will try to address them in any format that we can. And uh, we hope that you enjoy. <laughs>